there's a car rolling for you asking your name and then they show you a gun and they start shooting at you i could hear the bullets whistling so i was like he's trying to shoot me so um i remember i ducked everybody's trying to make it out no one's really trying to stay here and shit What's up guys, it's a beautiful day out here in uh, San Fernando Valley. I'm in Pacoima today, the famous uh, projects over here. I'm just gonna show you around a little bit and uh, show you some people from around here. I used to stay here in a lot of different neighborhoods, but uh, now I come here maybe once a year, you know, twice a year at most. You ain't a real neighborhood if you don't have a paletero right here. You got everything on there. Hey, wait, there's Gatorade? Hey, 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 you want something too? You want Gatorade? Water? You got water? You got water? water yeah. That's chamoy. Chile. Chile, limon, that's fire, that's what that is right there. You gotta, you gotta have that right there. Someone's wearing my pants. You want something? Huh? You want something? Yeah. We're in the San Fernando Gardens, aka the Pacoima Projects. Three days after I was, I was born, we moved into this apartment. Um, that was uh, March, early March. Uh, 1992, and then we moved into Dawson 4 around the corner. This one in particular is a three, a three, three bedroom. I believe that's the three bedroom, and then the corner ones are two bedrooms. Um, that was actually my room right there. So I had, I had front view, you know, of everything, you know. I'd hear fights, gunshots, and I'd be peeking through the window right there, trying to see what's up. My mom yelling at me to get away from the window. But uh, yeah, man, we a lot of good memories right here, good ones and bad ones. Those palm trees right there, been there for, fuck, I don't know how many years, but. There's a history, every 4th of July, the older homies would burn them. We used to have a, the playground used to have sand, so they'd put sand in the socks and drip them in, uh, or soak them in gas and throw them up to a palm trees. It was like a tradition. People used to think like that would pass by, they always thought like it was a split apartments because we have a door here and then a door in the back. But um, it's, it's all the same unit. And then uh, this way, this is the stairs. I remember when I was growing up, I would get in trouble. My mom would chase me and I'd run up the stairs. I used to be a ninja when I was a kid, so I remember I'd get to like the last stair and kind of kick off the wall and jump into the hallway. The small room was always my room. This used to be my room right here. My nephews took over. It was way different when I was here. I just had a huge bed, a bench press right there. But we'd come, close the door, crack the windows open and hot box. Um, but yeah, this, this used to be my room. My little nephews took over now. Way nicer than I had it. <laughs> um, yeah, and this, the, the apartment's pretty big. You know, it has, uh, you know, th that's the small room. This is the, the larger room here. Hi, mamas. Yeah, so th this is the, the big room, I guess. You gotta have one of those right there. You ain't Mexican if you don't got one of those. Sacuditas right there. That's pretty much it. This was home. Still is home. Always will be home. And then, you know, obviously, like I said, when with my mom, you know, chasing me, throwing the chocolate or the gancho, whatever it was, when I would come back downstairs, I'd be like, trying to not make noise so she wouldn't hear me coming down. Idea. When they remodeled the, the apartments, um, they added a chopping board and a lot of people don't have it no more. I don't know why. <laughs> um, yeah, they actually redid, they redid the whole kitchen. They, they made a, a pantry now. Back in the day, um, when we were kids, it, like, we used to look, it used to be like a walkthrough closet. So you used to be able to run you know, through this door, through this walk-in closet to the other door. Um, but when they remodeled them, they kind of just did a separate, like now there's a pantry here and a closet on the other side. Um, yeah, they, they did good. They did good with remodeling. I actually like this area right here right where we're at right now. We have uh, access to the parking lot right away. Um, nice views, nice garden. It's still a process trying to come into the projects. You wait until five or seven years just to get in the projects, just to have a home. These are the apartments for like, for like when, when you can't afford a house. And then you just live on the EBT or welfare. 
you just get these apartments, but you gotta wait. It's, it's not. It's, it's yeah. It's like a five, seven year process. If you don't get these, you could get projects from like LA or somewhere else. Why do you think we're starting all this rap stuff? Let's just try to get out. I used to play soccer. Now I don't, cause right now it's like people know like, all right, we we we're from the projects, right? And then mostly people from the other side, they mostly know who we are. And then now that we can't even play soccer by ourselves, because that's how you know there's a car rolling for you asking your name. And then they show you a gun and they start shooting at you. People think it's still a competition when it's not a competition. It's just, it's just like we should un unite and be like able to change this world together and not go against each other. Never hate if somebody's making more money than you. Just always appreciate it and make them as your role models. Just don't be selfish with yourself. It's a struggle, man. We live every day, man, you know? We face battles. You know, we have consequences for every, every step we'll be doing, man, you know? This is where we grew up at. This is where it's at. Um, the community center. A lot of us grew up like going there and shit. When we didn't have computers, you would just go right there. Even now, you know, all the kids, they, grow, they go there, they grow up in this neighborhood, and it, it's like a tight community. Everybody here just, everybody knows everybody. Like, you can like just drive in here and, and people know if you live here or not, you know? Even if they don't like talk to you, they just, people just know each other. It's weird, it's so weird vibing here. Like, it's, it's like it's our own world in here. I remember uh, coming to school right here and, um, this was like the main entrance right here actually as we we're walking up and um that 2 30 would come around man and we would have like ladies right here selling you know ices candy all kinds of stuff you know like stuff that you see in, in, in neighborhoods you know like this where you could buy elotes raspados um all that good stuff man candy you know for a dollar you'd go home with chips and icy go watch some cartoons this is pokemon elementary i think it's a charter school now but um it's gotten a little bit better. Like it, it was crazy when I when I went here. Even as kids, you would see like, you know, um, cause the the school's right next to the park. So we we would watch, you know, a lot of the 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 older guys, you know, doing transactions or getting like you would hear shootouts, people getting down over there in the park. Um, so we just grew up around all this stuff. But e even though like it was rough, like you managed to just kind of be happy, you know, just coming to school and hanging out with your friends. We used to like waking up early and we would race to who'd be the first one in line for breakfast. And um, we never failed because, you know, it, it was, I don't know if it was because we were gonna eat. We always knew we were gonna get a little coffee cake. And, uh, you know, people that know what I'm talking about, that coffee cake was, it was bomb, you know? So it was it was worth us waking up early, racing to be the first ones. And um, it was it was just a good time, you know? like. We didn't have no stress, no bills. We didn't have anything to worry about at that time. Like I said, in the morning, you want to race to the cafeteria and get get that coffee cake. This building here, when I came, was the fourth and the fifth graders. Because I remember my fourth grade class with Miss Weintraub was in the bottom. And then uh, in fifth grade, I had Miss Rotman, and she was upstairs. The school's changed for sure. I mean, you know, I don't remember it being maybe this colorful and clean. I've been to Denver, Colorado. You know, I was there uh, for high school, and um, that's one thing I noticed about, you know, um, where I grew up at, all the cities are gated, you know, because of the, the history we have, you know, as you can see, like, windows got bars on them. And I do remember actually going on lockdowns, now that we're touching that subject, um, we would have frequent um, lockdowns, you know, the teachers would lock the door, and the principal would be on the speaker, like, telling everybody to just hang, hang tight. Um, yeah, and when I went to Denver, you don't see none of that. There's no fences there. And they need them, you know, with all those crazy shooters they have over there. Crazy people. Um, yeah, actually, I, remember, I think that that was my third grade. Or I can't remember. It was one of these corner ones, though. I had a, my third grade teacher. I think his name was Mr. Mr. Lodi. If you were the first one to finish, then um, you'd get a Snickers. And uh, it definitely uh, was something to look forward to if you finish your... Uh, your assignment, task, whatever. A lot of the people in this area are low-income um, housing or low-income families. Um, but people do make it out, you know? Like, I've, I've met guys that came to this school that are doing great. Um, you know, maybe it's just the, the, the choices that we make that take us to where we, we're gonna go, you know? Um, everybody has um, the choice, you know, to, to do what you want to do. We did a lot of things that maybe other kids, you know, at that age don't do. And um, it, it was fun to us, you know. It, you know, now, now that I'm older, like, I, I think back to it and I miss it, you know, especially around those times, you know, we've lost a lot of friends that, that uh, we grew up with. And 
it, when you think back to those times, like where your heart and your mind were at at that time, you miss it, you know, because you wish you could go back and maybe change some things, you know, and, and that's just life in the neighborhood, you know, you lose people and um, whether it's, you know, to the jail or, or they lose their life, um, you know, growing up in this place will definitely teach you and if you don't know, you know, to appreciate life, like, because it, it, could, it could come and go quick. This was the spot right here where you come get your coffee cake and then I think during lunch, you, you, um, we just saw grandma cookies, um, chocolate chip cookies, but this was a this was a place to be in the morning for that coffee cake. Bomb, bomb. We still talk about it to the day. We have a boxing gym right there. Um, I think uh, Oscar de la Hoya. I'm not sure. Don't quote me on that. Or I, like I know he was involved in it. I know when they opened it, he was here as well. Um, I know they have boxing matches in the in the basketball gym. I may not look like I go to the gym, but that's that's my go-to like for stress and whatever. Anyways, this is where I started. I remember I was like 13 and already benching the 45s. And uh, I always wanted to hit two plates, and now I can, pushing for more. But yeah, this this used to be our weight room here, and it was just old banged up stuff. But we'd come and like, we're just recording a, a oh. documentary. Okay. If we can, it, I, no, I was, no, that's fine. Yeah, we yeah. were just wondering what you were recording for. No, I was telling I was telling him that it used to be a weight room like eight years ago, maybe more. But um, Knock yeah, we were just wondering who was going in there. Yeah, yeah. Thank you. Sorry, thank thank you. you. Can we get a shot of the gym as well? Or? Uh, yeah, there's volleyball games in there right now though. Yeah, uh, just, we'll just have a peek. Can we? Yeah. Yeah. Well, it looks like there's a volleyball game going on, but um, the the boys that we're good at basketball this is where they came and played. The homie Froggy, all the tall guys, G Baby. I was never. I'm not even much of a basketball player, so I never cared for it, but uh. It's, it's a nice gym, it always was. They, they try to keep it clean, but I hated basketball. I, I, I was never a basketball kind of guy. She saw me wearing the, this, this color hat, and um, she must be familiar with the gang, so she knows, like, she confused it though. She thought it was a different hat, but uh, it's not the hat that she thinks, but it's for a rival gang. So she was letting me know to be careful, you know, because it's been hot, you know, as people refer to, whether it's the cops or just, you know, rival gang members out here. Me being in the area where the kids are around and them mistake me, and then, you know, by me being mistaken, them doing something to me and the kids being next to me, it's it's always an issue and it does happen. Actually, like years ago, you know, um, some kid did get caught, got caught in crossfire and he was young, he was like eight or nine, got shot in the head. So they're always concerned, you know, even me, like, like I wouldn't want that, you know, just because I look a certain way and then somebody mistakes me for something or whatever and I get shot at and, the people next to me get hit you know it's it's kind of you don't want that to happen first time that i actually like got shot at what that i could remember was like like a big deal you know because i was getting shot at i was actually running this way towards the towards this gate right here and uh, i was on a bike i could hear the bullets whistling so i was like he's trying to shoot me so um i remember i ducked and i was i was looking at i was like looking and peeking at the gate and i was like Fuck, the gate's right there, what am I gonna do? And I remember just with the the adrenaline, I dropped the bike and I just, as you can see, it's pretty high. And But I was younger, you know, a, a lot more fit. And I, I just jumped it, you know, and I ran and got the boys. And my boy was, when we came back, my boy was on the ground, shot. Um, it was nothing major, just saw, shot him in his nalga. That'd be a perfect example of actually that happening because that, you know, the lady approaching me, kind of warning me about, or just giving me a head. So she wasn't really warning me, but just, you know, she cares for the kids, obviously, so she doesn't want anything to happen to the kids. Um, just like what happened to me that time, you know, I was I was like 13 or 14 at that time. And, um, the, you know, the guy, the, the shooter was was just, I mean, he was aiming at us, but there, there was, I, I remember there was a soccer game going on. There was people, I believe some lady grabbed one of my other boys, because me and my boy were on bikes and then the other one was running. Um, I remember, I think some lady hugged him, you know, just hoping, I guess, the guy wouldn't shoot him you know if he if uh she was hugging him this is a um guardian angel here they have their own school i never came here i'm pretty sure i probably wouldn't have never gotten accepted <laughs> but yeah this is a um guardian angel catholic school i think i think it's from kinder to 12th grade i'm not sure but um it, definitely a lot of kids come here sometimes we'd run in here because we knew the cops weren't going to come in here and try to grab us so we'd wait for them to leave and just hang out in here. I never came to this church here. Uh, um, when I was growing up, my family already um, had a church we'd go to. We'd go to Santa Rosa in um, 
I'm not sure if it's San Fernando or Silmar, but um, this church has always been here. I think it's been here as long as the the housing projects have been there. Um, a lot of people do come here, like on, on, when they hold mass on Sunday. It's there's traffic through um, the street right there. We're walking up on the homie right here, filming a video. The homies right here doing his thing. You want the you want the chopstick or you got it? You got it. That's the chopstick. You know we have a lot of history right here. Been through a lot. Growing up through a lot of struggle, but we're still here trying to make positive vibes. You know, trying to make something happen, man. Drew Savage, man. I'm a local artist from the 818 San Fernando Gardens, Coimbos, where I stay. He's right here. My boy is wrapped up a, a video shoot right now. Fuck that side, Drew Savage. We 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 chopped it up right now. We just finished and shit. We're here. We're in the Pacoima projects. Everything. We really come from poverty and shit. Like everybody grew up right here and shit. Everybody's trying to like. Everybody's trying to make it out. No one's really trying to stay here and shit. This probably is everything is temporary. Yeah. And fuck with my boy Drew Savage at Drew Savage underscore EBK. Fuck with me, Pop Two Fresh, AK Two Fresh. That's the end of the video. I hope you enjoyed it. Uh, San Fernando Valley. It's like its own city. It's really big, and uh, a lot of people don't really know about it. Especially people who are not from LA, and even LA people don't come over here you know but it's a very big city has a lot of it's like a big city, part of LA but it could be its own city got a lot of history got a lot of people over here from different backgrounds uh, hope you enjoyed this video